I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make a cyborg arm. Since I moved, I've been doing tons of home renovation and shop setup and practical projects, and it was just time to do something fun. With Halloween right around the corner, I thought it would be fun to make a costume, but I don't really have time to make an entire costume, so I'm just gonna make one piece of it. I settled on making a cyborg arm that I could put on with any other clothes that I wanted and just kinda be a Terminator or a random cyborg when I go trick-or-treating with my kids. I don't really have a lot of ideas here yet. I did look at some pictures of C-3PO to see how they made different pieces to fit around his arm so that it could still bend. And then I did a quick sketch with some rough ideas. I think I'm gonna make this out of foam because that's what I have on hand. Let's get to it. I took a rough measurement of my bicep and then using that number, I cut out a rectangle of foam floor mat. This was a little bit oversized so that I was sure I had enough material to wrap around my arm. I wasn't exactly sure of the shape that I was going for, so I just drew a curve across the piece and then tried my best to get it symmetrical before cutting it out. I wrapped it around my arm to figure out where it got in the way. Basically, I didn't want it to get in the way of me folding my elbow or my shoulder, so I made some small modifications to the shape and again, tried to keep it symmetrical so that the sides would meet up when I glued them together. For the glue, I used some barge cement and added a thin layer on both faces, let it dry, and stuck them together. It's a great contact cement. To get this thing into shape, I used a heat gun to heat it a little bit, hold it into the shape that I wanted while it cooled down. I changed the whole thing so it was a little bit flatter, not a perfect circle, and folded down the elbow cup just a little bit. Then it was time to make a template for my forearm, and to do this, I wrapped the whole thing in aluminum foil and then covered all of that surface with some duct tape. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. This is something I learned from Evil Ted Smith, and it works great. Once I had it completely covered in duct tape, I took a Sharpie and started drawing out some panels. Again, I didn't really have a plan here, but I started just trying to break up the panels to where they covered most of my forearm, but still had some spots where you could see the inner workings on the inside. I cut the template off with some scissors, and then cut out each one of the panels individually. In this case, it would actually be better to cut them a little bit oversized, because you can always trim them down a little bit. I traced out these templates on some more foam floor mat and cut them out. Now in this case, I didn't pin these down, I just held them down, and that doesn't make for an exact match. If you need them to be very exact, you want to pin them down to the surface before tracing and cutting them. Once again, I got out the heat gun to shape these pieces to fit my arm. One thing to think about here is that as you get them formed and apply more heat, it starts to relax some of the shape that you've already put into it. So you have to keep track to make sure that all of your shape is staying in the pieces as you continue to heat them and form them. The cool thing is you can localize some of the heat here and just get small corners or small details to change without changing the entire piece. Once I got this in pretty good shape, it was time to put it on my shirt. The first shirt that I bought was my size, but that meant that the sleeve was a little bit too loose to hold the armor pieces in place. So I had to go back and get a smaller shirt, which is very uncomfortable to wear, but there is a tight sleeve where all the pieces should stay pretty much in place. Before permanently attaching these, I wanted to make sure that everything fit in the right place and start to add some detail. So I used some duct tape to hold the panels onto my sleeve in a temporary position. This turned out to be a really good idea because some of these panels were a little bit too big and I couldn't bend my elbow. Having them in place on my arm let me figure out exactly where I needed to cut out to make them fit. I tried several different variations and finally got them in a pretty good shape. Then it was time to cut the sleeve off the shirt and I did that with a simple fabric cutter. I laid the panels back in place relative to each other and started to draw some detail lines. These are really just stylistic, they don't mean anything specific. Really, they were just there to infer that each one of these panels is actually made up of smaller panels. I used a sharp knife to score along these lines but did not cut all the way through. Once you score these lines, you can take a heat gun to them and it opens up the cut just a little bit more. It's a really nice way to add some depth to an otherwise flat surface. Depending on how deep your cut is, is how much this will open up as you add heat. Then it was time to start assembling the gauntlet for the arm. I cut out a piece of the shirt to have a backing for all of these pieces of gauntlet to stick to and then added some barge both to the material and to the back of the foam. I also added some to these strips of elastic that I cut down to smaller pieces. I used the elastic to hold all of the pieces in position relative to each other and then backed all of this with the material from the t-shirt. You certainly don't have to put the material on the back side of this, but it does help hold everything together even if some of the elastic comes loose. It also gives you a nice surface to add detail and paint to later on. 
The trickiest part of this was trying to make sure that everything would stay in the right shape as you were gluing it together. And that's especially true when putting on the last pieces. Once you get this glued together, you're kind of stuck with the shape that it's in. If you do something like this, take your time, maybe test with some tape before you go gluing it together. Luckily, mine turned out to fit pretty well. Next up was the glove, and for this I used a really cheap work glove that I got and cut out a piece of foam to fit over the back side of the palm. There wasn't a very specific purpose for this panel, so I just cut down a piece to act as a piece of armor on the back side of the hand. I got it to its general shape and then trimmed it down to fit, adding some detail to the top and then taking it to the belt sander to add a chamfer just to add a little bit more depth. I didn't want the squared off angles right on the top of the hand, it just looked kind of weird. I added some heat to this to seal it up and open up those cuts as well, and fold it to match the curve of the back of my hand. Once I had all these pieces pretty much in their final shape, I made a little makeshift hanging paint booth and covered all of them with some Plasti Dip. This is really just to seal the foam and stop it from cracking when you add paint to it later. This isn't a necessary step, but it will help your foam projects last a lot longer. And also Plasti Dip is just one of the many different ways that you can seal up foam projects. Next up, my favorite part of the project, paint. This isn't my favorite part because you get to really make it look like something other than foam. In this case, I just watered down some black acrylic paint, wiped it deeply into all of these cuts and all these grooves, and then wiped off the surfaces. It adds a lot of depth. Then I did some dry brushing, which is just getting a little bit of silver paint, or whatever color you want, on your brush, running over the high spots, which adds a lot of depth as well. This is one of those cases where less is more, but it does start to look like metal if you hit just the high spots. This project is sponsored by and powered by Trello. And when I say powered by, I mean that it's an app that I've been using for almost two years to run my business. It's how I keep track of all the different content that I want to make and the state of all the different videos that I'm working on at any given time. It's a super flexible app that you can use on any device, but let me tell you how I use it. Trello has boards, and those boards contain lists. The lists contain cards. So for me, I use a video project board with lists for each month. Each one of the cards in the list is a project. And inside each one of those projects, there's tons of information that I can keep, reference photos, notes, checklists about whether things are complete or have yet to be completed. It's a great way for me to keep track of all the resources and all the information about each one of these projects and videos. And if a scheduling item changes, I can just drag one of those cards to a different list. But like I said, Trello is flexible enough to be anything you need it to be. If you need a place to organize your ideas or keep track of dates and to-do lists, you can do all that stuff with Trello. And one of the coolest things is that all the core features are free and they'll always stay that way. So it costs you nothing to try it out, which is actually kind of amazing that they're even sponsoring this video because it's free for you and for me to use. There'll be a link down in the description so you can go try out Trello on your favorite device. Go check them out. I also added a little bit of silver paint just to highlight some of the tops of my knuckles and the sides of my fingers and then fit where the panel went on the back of the hand. I added some barge to the back of the foam and to the back of the glove before letting them dry and sticking them together. I did want to take advantage of some of the gaps between these panels, so I added some wires and used some hot glue to hold them in place. You could definitely spend a lot of time here adding all sorts of fancy detail and really interesting stuff in between these panels to make it look like there was a robot underneath all of this armor. I didn't want to overdo it, so I just did a few different colors of wire and wrapped them around the panels in different ways so that they looked like they weaved in and out of the arm. I used hot glue deep underneath the panels to hold it so that you didn't see the glue sticking out on the black material. I even added a few of them under the back of the glove panel that could stick up into the sleeve to look like the hand was connected to the rest of the arm. I left these a little bit long and loose so I could tuck them in. Then with the sleeve on, I marked the areas that weren't going to be covered up by the armor and then took the sleeve off to attach some wires to the sleeve itself. This is another place where you could add tons and tons of detail here to show the exposed sections. I just added a few because of time. Other than the fact that the hot glue would probably hurt your arm, it would be really cool to do this with the sleeve on your arm so that the wires could wrap around from one side to the other. I took some black paint over all of these so they didn't look like brand new wires and just aged them a little bit. This really helped push them into the seams and make them not quite as obvious. For me personally, it's really easy to just keep going on this. You can always add more weathering and more detail to it, but at some point you gotta stop and actually try it on. 
And when it comes down to it, this is really just a quick Halloween costume, so I'm going to call the finishing done. But I do have a couple of more objects to add to this to add a little bit of detail. One of them is just a piece of tubing with some paint on the inside, and I'll put that over my elbow in between the two pieces to make it look like some sort of a tube. And then the other thing is some EL wire. This is a luminescent wire that's battery powered, and when you turn it on, it glows blue. It doesn't look like much right now in a bright room, but in the dark, this stuff looks really cool. You could feed this into the costume if you want to, but I'm actually just going to drop the power supply down into my pocket and then feed this wire up through my shirt and down my sleeve. That way I can use just the amount of wire that I need for the costume and the rest of it I can just tuck into my pocket. Then it was time to finally try on all the pieces together. First, I put on the sleeve, then the upper bracer and fed the EL wire through the bracer so that it was free right at my elbow. I slid on the gauntlet and then weaved the EL wire in and out of all of the different panels. One thing I was really worried about here was knocking off some of the detail wires that I'd put in on all of these different pieces. Luckily, the hot glue kept everything in place as I moved the wires around and added in the tube. Then I just pulled on the glove and tucked in those loose wires into the gauntlet and it was ready. There you go, with a little bit of work, you have a cyborg arm. And the coolest thing about it is you can wear your regular clothes for the rest of the costume and you get tired of wearing this, you can just pull it off and be done for Halloween. I just kind of stuffed and wrapped the eel wire in here, and so it is loose and it's kind of popping out in different places. You could definitely glue it in place, but that will make the entire thing a little bit harder to take on and off. I quickly made this into multiple pieces, but if you really wanted to, you could attach both of these to the sleeve so you could pull the entire thing on, and that would give you more flexibility as far as adding details and lights and all of these extra spaces. I hope you like this one, and if you want to see some more projects like this, I've got a couple more, but I learned almost everything I know about foam from Bill Duran at Punished Props and Evil Ted Smith. I'm going to link both of them down below because if you're interested in this type of stuff, they know all of the tricks and have tons of great videos on this topic. So for Halloween, I'm just going to be a one-armed cyborg guy, I guess. Let me know what you're going to be for Halloween down in the comments below. I've got lots of other videos that you might be interested in. Be sure to check those out here, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.